get into the video, I just want to point out that this video was filmed like five months ago. So I look a bit different and I act a bit different. Let's get into the video. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning. It's 7 a.m. And today I'm going to try to learn how to code a website in a day. So the plan is pretty simple. I'll try to code a one-page website or a one-pager. Second, I can use the code from other websites. Anything goes. Oh, forgot to mention, you can already check out the website because at the time you're watching this, I've already coded the website. So first, I did some research on the very basics of coding. And uh, here's what I found out. HTML is the markup language and it tells what elements are on the page. CSS is then used to style the website. And finally, JavaScript can be used to add more complex dynamic features to the website. Then to code a website, you need some sort of a code editor. You could just write it in a regular text editor but it's a lot easier with a dedicated app as uh, these apps can point errors in your code and organize your code in a neat way. Uh, I had no time to review any code editors, uh, so I just chose brackets uh, for no particular reason. And then I was ready to start coding. First, let's talk about HTML. All the HTML documents must start with a document type declaration. The HTML document itself begins with HTML tags and the visible part of the HTML document is between the body tag. An HTML element is defined by a start tag, some content and an end tag. The HTML element is everything from the start tag to the end tag. For instance, to add a heading, you would just type in uh, h1, which is the start tag, then my first heading, which is the content, and then um, uh, a bracket uh, h1, uh, which then uh, concludes the elements. And when you know that, you can start placing uh, like very simple elements on your website. You can just go to a website like w 3 schoolscom and look up the list of different elements and then choose the ones you need on your website. And that's what I did. Headings and paragraphs. And voila! <laughs> we have the first draft of our website. Next, I need to figure out how to separate the page into four sections. And to do that, I decided to use the div element. A div element or HTML content division element is used to group content so it can easily be styled using the class or ID attributes. And it also divides a section of a document. My idea was to have four parts on the website with four subheadings. That was like this, the skeleton for my website. Yeah, this looks pretty uh, terrible. Let's spend some time styling this website. And here's when we get to the CSS language. Simply put, CSS can be used to stylize an HTML document. Here's how you write CSS code. First, you type in the selector that points to the HTML element you want to stylize. Then you write a declaration which contains a CSS property name and a value separated by a colon. This CSS code is now telling the document that all H1 headings should be blue. Amazing. You can input CSS code in three ways. External CSS is when you create an external sheet and write your CSS code there, and then link that sheet to the HTML document. Then there's the internal CSS, which is when you write the CSS code in the HTML inside the style element, inside the head section. And finally, there's the inline CSS, which is when you add a style attribute to any element in the HTML document. Confusing? Yes, let's move on. Now, I decided to go with the internal CSS because I was only aiming to code one web page and I did not need to worry about uh, coding or changing the style of, of multiple web pages, in which case external CSS would have been the better, more convenient, more efficient option. This is actually looking pretty good already. We have the basic structure. Now it's time for the quick workout. Better. So at this point, I again shifted from styling my web page to um, adding more content to my web page. First, I added the most basic HTML elements, which include lists, links, photos, and forms. Again, it was super easy to find most of these elements from uh, W3Schools, but creating the form was, was a bit more difficult. And in the end, I just I just copied someone else's code from uh, sunweeby.com. 
columns and we yeah cool so now i have 350 lines of code and we have created the most basic html elements you can have around 3 pm i moved on to creating css elements you could say that I had a lot of ideas in my mind. First of all, I'm gonna create sticky elements, a, a visitor counter, hover effects, drop caps, parent element, CSS animations, snippet that displays random quotes, two external style sheets. Within that parent, I'll have more children. And I, I have to be honest, from this point onwards, I was relying more and more on the copy-paste function. My coding process looked like this. Number one, use Google search. Number two, copy code. Number three, paste code. Number four, fix code. And with this highly complex coding process, I was actually able to add some pretty neat uh, functions to my web page. For instance, I added this awesome square, which moves with the screen, and I even added a CSS animation. Look, this square automatically changes color. And last but not least, if I click this button, the whole style of this page changes. And then it was time to move to JavaScript. Yeah, my code is already getting quite messy. There's a lot of unnecessary code here. This is also probably one of the biggest differences between a novice coder like me and a more advanced coder. Because what I've done in like 400 lines of code, they could probably do in like 100 lines of code or, or even less. I don't know. JavaScript was initially created to make web pages alive. Uh, it's part of the code that makes your site interact with the user. In HTML, JavaScript code is inserted between the script tag. Between those tags, you can write functions and, and rules for them. For instance, one of the many JavaScript functions is the getElementById uh, function. The function you're now seeing on the screen would find an HTML element with the ID demo and change the element content to hello JavaScript. And then you could connect that function to a button on the website so that when the user clicks the button, it initiates the JavaScript function and the HTML element with the ID demo changes. Yeah, these, these uh, JavaScript functions, they're on another level. There's a whole new dimension here. I know. So again, as I had no idea what I was doing, I initiated my complex coding process. I was able to find JavaScript snippets from other sites and somehow managed to make them work on my site. But the code was so, so ugly. Anyways, here are a few things I coded with JavaScript. Uh, a light bulb that changes color with the click of a button, uh, text that changes when you click it, uh, image that changes when you click it, a randomly generated quote. But I have no idea what this code is doing. It's creating variables and then functions and then I don't know. It's a it's a it's a fucking mess. I've heard people say that coding is mostly about finding errors from your code. And it seems to be true. Multiple times now, I've spent countless minutes finding errors like a missing semicolon or an extra bracket somewhere deep in the code. But when you find it, when you find the error, well, let's just say... And then at 10 p.m., just as I thought I was finished with my web page, I faced a, a huge problem. This website or web page is not responsive at all. So if I resize the window, everything is out of whack. So I just figured out that it would be possible to make the page more responsive, but it would take so long that I can't really do it. So I've decided to create a totally unresponsive website. So it means that if you resize the window, the elements will not resize. That's a tough call, but I have to do it. I did it! I can't believe it. I coded a website in one day. I mean, it's not the most beautiful website, but it, it, it has links you can click on. It even has boxes that change color. Overlay effects you can click on. It even has a random quote generator. How many websites do you know that have a random quote generator? That's right. This is probably the only one you know. Oh, <sighs> I'm happy. I'm really happy.
the paper. First, <laughs> number one, use Google search ruthlessly. No. <laughs> I think that's about it for the video. <laughs>